What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now Plus. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about that Hogwarts Legacy review from Wired. I couldn't resist. I really couldn't. I decided to put it on this channel, you know, maybe keep it a little bit away from the main channel, uh, although we have talked about kind of the integrity of journalists over there quite a bit. Thought I'd put it here. All right, what do you need to know? Well, it, it's uh, awful. I mean, there's actually not much more that you need to know than that. Couple things, though. Couple things just to try to cover all bases. Number one, please, for the love of God, don't click the article. And I only say that because one of the things that these people, I guess, strive for is to make us as consumers or, or fans or whatever, they make us mad, and then you hate click, you hate watch shows. And then those shows end up breaking records and, you know, things like that. And these sites continue to be allowed to do these things because this is probably one of the worst reviews I've ever seen in my life. But I've seen them through screenshots. I didn't actually look through the entire thing because I'm not going to give them an advertisement kind of click. And I hope as many of us as possible also don't give them those clicks, okay? That's number one. Number two, this is me declaring as a statement for all purposes, but also just because it is kind of right. Don't go after this person, literally at all. They are nothing. They are separate from this. We can sit here. We can talk about it. We can laugh about it um, or get mad, you know, however you want to approach it. But leave this person out of it, right? Obviously, don't contact this person, any of that kind of stuff. Casual, normal things to say. All right. So they gave it a one out of 10. That is absolutely hilarious. This is also, by the way, not a call for demanding people give this game good reviews. In fact, I think that's, I, I don't know if that's necessarily what makes me different, but I like to throw it in there because I don't oftentimes hear people say that when things get like review bombed or get super low scores or super high scores. It's not, it's not a call to force people to think about, to think what we think, right? It's not that. And that's important because that's actually not what this entire thing is about. It's about just being fair and it's about judging the actual game. And it's extremely, extremely clear that did not happen here, right? So this is not me saying they need to give it a 9 out of 10. Otherwise, they're, they're sellouts or they're, you know, whatever their, their agenda is, they're doing it for that. I mean, you could give it whatever score you want. If you think this is a 5 out of 10 game, that's fine. Different scores. Uh, I know for Wired, the criteria... Like, 1 out of 10 is basically the... Is, it, well, I mean, it is the worst thing you could ever get. But, like, its description means, like, you're a god-awful game. 5 is seemingly average. So, sometimes scores, it's like 6 or 7 is average. 5 is average for Wired, right? So, you got you to gotta remember all that. So, I mean... Give it a five, give it a four, give it a three, whatever you want to do, but do it because of the actual game. And that's very, very clearly not, not what they did. Most of this review, at least huge screenshots, and we'll kind of show it as I talk. I'm not going to read over it. It's this person's diary, you know, without getting into the, the politics or what different communities have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. That is very much separate. And I'll tell you why it's separate, because it has nothing to do with this game. That's just something we all kind of need to accept and understand because talking about it over and over again, you just go into these big circles, it gets annoying, right? It's got nothing to do with this game. This game is actually incredibly diverse, inclusive, all those kind of key words. In fact, it is probably the most diverse of any Wizarding World property thing on the face of the earth. I mean, I would bet real world money that that is the case. But it reads like this person is venting, that this person went through hardships or, well, they normally talk for other people, right? Normally these writers, they're not actually part of the community. They talk for the community. They're kind of their spokesmen. And well, that oftentimes doesn't work either, right? So this person talks about what it's like to hear certain things, you know, kind of growing up or through school and all this stuff. And this goes on for multiple paragraphs. And I still struggle to actually understand what that has to do with the video game can we talk about the combat can we talk about the exploration can we talk about the open world like can we talk about the actual game and who know god knows how long right? i saw two specific paragraphs that just go ahead you know after their life story or somebody else's life story or whatever 
And then we get to the bottom, the actual uh, verdict, right? So I said one out of 10. And the wired side is it helped me say goodbye to the setting for good. So there is no good, right? That That's kind of the joke there. And then the tired side. The story is rooted in anti-Semitic tropes. The gameplay feels dated. The graphics feel like they're a couple generations behind. All the characters are one-dimensional. It doesn't stay true to the established lore. Every character feels like an off-brand version of the characters we know and love. There's no sense of place, no magic, no heart. And then you look at the title, Review, there is no magic in Hogwarts Legacy. The game is mid at best, and it's real-world harms are impossible to ignore. So a couple things. Let's start from that title. They kind of show their entire hand right off the bat, right? The fact that there's no magic. The game's mid at best. I know I tweeted this right on Twitter and a lot of people going after the writer for like who a professional, a real world journalist. They're not, but real world journalist using the word mid as a, you know, a subtitle there. That's pretty funny. But then that second part, right? The real world harm is impossible to ignore. You just showed your whole hand. You, you literally just said, because of its connection, I'm going to judge it. Oh, and I mean, as the article goes on, that is what you're judging the entire thing on. You're judging it just based off of its creator. And that, which, by the way, uh, she didn't create this game. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you got to remember that as well. We can go around forever about the anti-Semitic tropes. I'm going to skip that for the sake of sanity. Uh, the gameplay feels dated. The gameplay is honestly one of the best parts of the game. The gameplay is awesome. Now, again, like it's not, I'm not saying you have to say that. I'm not saying, you know, that's my opinion of the gameplay but the gameplay feels dated I, I don't think the gameplay feels dated at all the the graphics th this is not the most beautiful game like of all time I actually think it's probably on the good end of open world RPGs there's a lot of detail character faces they're pretty good they do they do lack kind of expressions you know facial and you know I, I guess the facial animation side of things could be tweaked but like so you could say, again, like these are the things, you can say some negatives or you can say whatever negatives you want. But to say like a couple of generations behind, so you're talking like you want to go back, couple means two, right? You want to go back to the PS3 and 360. Did you play Saints Row? Like have you played some of the games that are basically, from, or, or just go play a game from the PS3 and 360 era, right? Just do that and then tell me how you feel about it then. All the characters are one dimensional. I don't think that's true. I think some characters are more fleshed out than others. Some characters are kind of close in their personality or what they're fighting for let's say versus others again it's not perfect but I wouldn't say that either it doesn't stay true to the established lore is also funny I actually said this on Twitter it number one it does I, I don't understand that literally at all this is one of the most authentic things you could ever make in your life but number two this person probably hates the established lore I think that's kind of the hidden side of things right is the if this was retelling Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and it was that movie slash book as a game. They, I mean, I mean, you still would hate it because you know because of other things. I guess you just wouldn't say about the established lore. I, I don't think that's true at all. Characters feeling like what we've loved before, no sense of place, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just it's such a bad review. And so let me just quickly say this is what hurts them, right? What's odd, and actually what's a little bit different about a situation like this is this is such an egregious review. It's such a, a side example versus the rest. Sometimes, right, when you look at movies, or you look at games, and the critic scores will be so low, and then the audience scores will be high, or vice versa. Critic scores will be high, audience score will be low. Those are signs that the entire industry is out of touch. And I, I really do believe that. I also believe generally the media for movies, for games, they are out of touch. I, I mean, I've just, I believe that for a while. It's easy to see when you have those discrepancies, right? When all of them are saying it and then gamers are like, are you, are you nuts? Like it's, it's actually the opposite, right? Either way, good or bad. What's odd about this situation, and I think what's kind of uh, causing like a massive stir across the industry, is when people were reviewing it, I mean, this game's getting really good scores. The game's getting nines, it's getting nine and a halfs, it's getting eight. Some of these sites aren't letting 
the biasness, the, the political ideology, they're not letting that impact the scores. Surprisingly, I thought there would be more like Wired. Now, there there are. There's there's more. So there's sites that are defending these people bullying people. I've seen sites talking about, or writers for the sites talking about, so what? They made people cry. Well, you, uh, that's, no, that's no big deal. Oh, so what? They're posting spoilers? Well, you know, that happens for everything. It's no big deal. It's not that they're posting spoilers. It's that that they're seeking people out that they know are into it, commenting, you know, top thing, all that kind of stuff. Like, they're not doing it on accident. What are these sites doing, right? So there are those situations, and you can easily identify a lot of these sites, right? But the, the interesting thing with this game that I didn't fully see coming, I'll say, is that a lot of sites actually, you know, and I keep bringing up IGN, they had the J.K. Rowling statement in their review but it was like a separate thing. They gave the game a nine. Again, I'm not saying you have to give the game nines, but it seems like they judged the game on the game, right? Seems like a lot of sites judged the game on the game. So I think a lot of these sites kind of, they didn't wake up. I, I personally don't think so. I think they'll go back into the routine. But I think a lot of the sites made the decision in the last couple of weeks, do we want to do what Wired did? Do we want to literally show our hand and say, this isn't a review. I saw people saying that on Twitter. This is not a review. This is an opinion piece. This is their thoughts on the political things of J.K. Rowling. That's what, that's what this is. This has nothing to do with the game. Absolutely nothing. So this is not a review. This is, if this is a review, this person needs to be fired immediately because this is the worst thing you could ever turn into your boss. Whoever okayed it should also be fired. Like, it, it's, it's not that hard. You know what I mean? And I actually thought more sites maybe would have done this, but I really think they looked themselves in the mirror and said, okay, we got to like swallow our fake pride. You know, because they don't really care about any of these issues, right? A lot of these people could care less. So it's not even real pride in like what they're talking about. We got to not play this fake game. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually review it. Or we can show our hand and say, we're not real. We're not real journalists. We're not real reviewers. We're going to play the game, maybe. You know, I don't even know how much did Wired actually play. We're going to play the game and then write a review, and we're going to give it such a low score. And the reasoning for that low score is not going to be because of the game. And you would show your hand. You would show it. Now, a lot of the, but what they don't realize is a lot of these sites have already shown their hand, right? IGN doing this does not make me trust them anymore, right? They've already lost so much. Uh, the Kotakus, the PC gamers, right? All this stuff. It doesn't matter anymore. That's kind of an aside thing, right? Where, I mean, maybe you can build it back up, right? If this is a stepping stone, a, a foundation to something else, something better, fine. I have a feeling it's not. I have a feeling this was like a one thing because I think they knew that people like us would kind of be not even looking out. I mean, these things just kind of pop up, and then we look at it, we laugh at it, right? Like, I think they knew that, though. I think they knew we got to actually review this game. We can't do, like, a Wired. Now, obviously, they didn't know it at the time, but we can't do what Wired did here because this is this is going to show our hand that this stuff lives with you, right? The IG and the water for Pokemon, right? That lives with you forever. It's the Internet. lives with you forever. This review completely ruins wired okay not that i ever once went to wired for a video game review nor will i ever but it completely stops that and then this reviewer by herself that any review they make going forward um you can always reference this always so they could be the greatest reviewer in the world for the next game but you say you wrote that hogwarts legacy is that you are you the same person that did the Hogwarts review? Because immediately, I don't care. And that lives with you forever. So congrats to Wired for, I guess, making it very known for like the 30 people that probably go to your site for these game reviews. Thank you for letting everybody else know to never visit your site. And then for the people that, I guess, read Wired for their game reviews, I don't know what their age is <laughs> i don't know who they are but um i, I think they should probably stop I, I really don't know who goes i mean that it's a joke i'm, I'm saying it for comedic purposes but i'm kind of serious even like the washington Post, like some of these sites or some of these things 
when they have like a gaming division, it's like who actually does it though? Who actually goes there for game review? I don't know. Washington Post maybe has more, but Wired, I didn't even know that this was even a thing. I know that I saw some people say, is this like the first time they've given scores? I think this is maybe a new rating system. I don't know. I don't know. It's fun to talk about and um, further signals their collapse because that is happening and it is going to continue to happen. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you guys are subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I will see you all on the next one.